I'm curious to learn more about uh, what you just said in regards to gold uh, market capitalization. Uh, your, your definition for the equities is, it makes sense. I mean, that, that's a pretty standard definition for the market cap of a stock or a broad index. How do you apply that to gold? So gold's trickier because you know it's it's obviously we don't net, we don't know the exact amount of gold that exists in the world, uh, but that you know for example the World Gold Council has public estimates for how much gold uh, has been mined and is still available uh, because you know virtually all gold uh, that is mined stays in circulation because that's one of the traits of gold is that it's it's you know infinitely reusable. Small amounts of it get get thrown out in electronics and things like that, but uh, the majority of it's still around. And so if you go by their estimate based on you know, and then multiply that by the price of gold per ounce, uh, that's where you, you get, you know, a range of, of maybe 10 to 12 trillion uh, in market capitalization. But then if you say segment that and say, OK, what is the percentage that consists of private investment? Uh, well, that's only, you know, it's several trillion. It, it's much less than 10 trillion. Uh, and so in that context, that's still a very small percentage of net worth. And so that's actually one of the reasons why when people say, you know, Bitcoin is going to displace gold. I point out that in the grand scheme of things, you know, we have a there's, there's more than uh, 500 trillion dollars in assets worldwide, uh, and so both of them are actually you know very small ponds in the ocean of assets. And so if it's more like you know I, I compare those to the size of the global bond market rather than you know uh, you know you know get concerned about which one's going to take market share from the other. Now you did say that Bitcoin has been consolidating and it's uh, the heat has fizzled off, so to speak. Where is the capital flowing? Is there evidence that it's flowed to a competing asset, equities, gold, um, anything that a Bitcoin investor could be interested in? Well, we've seen a few different areas. One is we've seen some of a resurgence of some of the the mega cap stocks, right? So they they also had a correction, you know, uh, you know, uh, along with gold, more or less. Ever since rates started rising in in summer of 2020, uh, a lot of those big big tech stocks have kind of gone sideways. Some of them have corrected. Uh, and in more recent, you know, the past month, a lot of those have broken back out. And so capitals flowed back into those. Uh, we've also seen, uh, you know, the classic alt season phenomenon. So generally when, when Bitcoin has bull markets, there are periods of time where, uh, you know, the thousands of other cryptocurrencies that are created uh, start actually outperforming. And that's basically that investors are going out on the risk curve. Right. So kind of like how gold has a bull market, people buy gold and people buy large cap gold miners and then they start speculating into exp exploration companies. And so basically what you're seeing in the crypto space is that, uh, you know, Ethereum is doing very well. That's the second largest uh, uh, cryptocurrency. And then if you yeah. go down into into, you know, DeFi protocols and things like that, a lot of those have been explosive. You also see uh, NFTs, you know, they, they've taken some of the heat away. We also, of course, had that big Dogecoin spike. And then, you know, recently you've had a correction in multiple currents uh, of them. Ethereum has been, been particularly strong over the past, uh, you know, couple of weeks. And so you, you kind of see these rotations that are happening around the margins in that space. We've also seen gold kind of showing some signs of, you know, not not really, um, you know, rising, but it's it's been somewhat consolidating after a correction. So the so that, you know, basically we're, we're, we seem to be having less capital flowing out of gold and, and then we see some stabilization there. You know, it's interesting of these assets, you named uh, equities as probably, in your opinion, the most overvalued, yet the Bitcoin and the other altcoins uh, around Bitcoin have have risen the most this year to what many people believe are is already bubble territory. Uh, I wonder if uh, I wonder if you think it has more upside, if, if that's one of the reasons why you don't think it's more overvalued than stocks. Well, I think there's still a good chance that Bitcoin has has further upside this year. Uh, there's certainly, you know, it's it's a less asymmetric trade idea than it was back in 2020 when it was, you know, ten thousand dollars a coin. Uh, so now that it's risen so much, you know, there still are a lot of on-chain indicators uh, that that look attractive. So, for example, the percentage of of coins that are held for more than a year, uh, the amount of coins that are on exchanges, uh, some of the the ratios for uh, you know, what is happening between, you say, realized capitalization versus market capitalization. Uh, a lot of those still look constructive, uh, but obviously it's, it's less of a kind of a slam dunk trade than it was last year. Now, I would agree that I think a lot of the other protocols all are, are overvalued. And, and my classic case would be Dogecoin, because that's a protocol that was initially made as a joke. Uh, it has, you know, it has less security than Bitcoin, right? So it has less, uh, much, you know, smaller hash rate. It's easier to attack. Uh, you know, it, it hasn't really been updated. Uh, it, it doesn't really have like an active development community like you see with, say, Bitcoin or Ethereum or some of these others. Uh, and so 
that that's one where you know i think that at, after this kind of you know party ends after we kind of maybe we get back to the you know the fed tapering or something like that that's where i think especially as you go out to the risk curve of these other cryptos i think there's a you know potential a lot of pain ahead for some of them and even bitcoin will probably have a correction the, you know the big question is what 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 level will it correct from no no development support for dogecoin much disappointment such sad much wow um okay well if you know the meme you would understand what i'm talking about finally i, I want to close on gold now gold's valuation uh, it, it, it's tricky there are a lot of factors pushing gold around last time we talked about uh the real interest rate being the primary factor it probably still is so uh let's just tie it back together everything we've talked about regarding the fed monetary policy and the economy where do you see real interest rates headed and how would that impact gold for the remaining quarters of this year yeah, since our previous conversation, we still see gold closely tracking real interest rates. Uh, and that part of the reason why gold was able to find, you know, maybe not the bottom, it could be, but at least a local bottom in the sense that, you know, 10-year uh, uh, yields stopped going up rapidly. They, they started, you know, they consolidated, they went back down a little bit at a time when inflation expectations were still strong. And so real yields, uh, you know, uh, decreased again. Uh, they haven't gone da back down to where they were in August 2020. Uh, but they've, they've eased and that has allowed gold to bounce. Uh, and so basically, as we look forward, like we mentioned, we have these base effects coming up. And so, uh, you know, some of these headline CPI numbers, you know, could be pretty surprising. Uh, and so and, and 10 year treasury yields, it's a it's a very large market. It's unable to move as quickly, uh, even though, it, as we saw in, in, say, months ago, it can it can actually move pretty quickly. Uh, but, you know, compared to what these base effects are going to be like in, in later this spring, uh, you know, it, it's quite possible that you get even even further down negative yields, mm -hmm. uh, and so that that's kind of the 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 big challenge with with gold investors is that they have to forecast both inflation uh, and they have to forecast bond yields, and so overall, I think you know the 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 risk uh, to reward ratio is somewhat improving in gold's favor for investors that don't mind the volatility. In addition, if you look at you know where gold is, and if you look at say the free cash flow that's being generated by gold miners. You know, a lot of them are doing great at current gold prices. Uh, and so, you know, unlike, say, the 2011 spike in gold, you know, they're controlling expenses. Energy prices are still pretty low. They're not plowing money into, say, you know, bad CapEx or bad acquisition projects. Uh, and so a lot of that money is going right to their bottom line. And then they're they're strengthening their balance sheets. They're, they're paying dividends. Uh, and so overall, the gold mining industry is in a pretty healthy space, uh, space even at current gold prices, let alone if gold were to, were to, you know, kind of rise from here. Uh, so that's, that's kind of the space that I'm watching that overall that's, you know, it's, it's a pretty healthy market in my view at the current time. And mm -hmm. there are ways to hedge it. So for example, uh, if you think inflation's, you know, going to run hot and bond yields might go up, then, you know, you can also invest in, in say banks, for example, that benefit from that steeper yield curve mm -hmm. and benefit from that more pro-inflationary environment uh, alongside, you know, gold or gold miners.